I'll come to you, Yogeshwar. You know, you you're the CEO of one of the best malls that we have in India today, and probably any international brands who wants to come wants to come through you. So uh, my point is that you know, over the years, how has the location strategy changed for you as a mall developer? How how are you differentiating between brands because you know all of them are selling online? So what is your policy to have them online? And I think secondly. Uh, you know, how do you feel stores have changed, let's say, over the years in terms of how people used to create, brands used to create stores till how they're creating it now? So, if everybody starts buying online, so that's very scary, scary for us, no? That uh, nobody will come to the mall, but uh, I doubt that will happen. In at least my lifetime, it will not happen. So, uh, I have a lot of respect for e-commerce, personally speaking, because the India consumption theory, which everybody was talking about for many, many years, you know, there is consumption, there is consumption, but it was not happening. But e-commerce players have showed it that it is possible. So in one day, they can sell so much. So there is a consumer. If you reach the consumer at the relevant prices, there is a consumer, which, which is really clearly evident by uh, flip cards of the world, you no know, snap deal, Amazon, everybody is showing it on daily basis that there is a consumer, so we can service that consumer. Secondly, uh, brick and mortar will continue to stay, especially shopping centers are not only about shopping. You know, if you see closely, uh, there are so many activities which happen at, uh, at shopping center. You know, we have uh, gymming, we have spa, salon, beauty, and then we have uh, coffee, dating. We celebrate all the, all the days, I mean, Christmas, Diwali, Holi, and all. So there's much more to a shopping center than only shopping. So I feel that uh, there's so much change has happened in the last seven years, seven, eight years of shopping, uh, you know, Select City Walk being in existence, that earlier every retailer wanted only one shop, which is on the ground floor, and is next to the entrance, you know. So by that logic, there should only be one shop in the mall, you know, there cannot be two shops. But now uh, people understand that uh, there is a zoning criteria, that there is relevant consumer, and uh, and the mall operator also has to be very uh, careful in choosing the brands what is relevant for the catchment. Now this is very uh, evident from one more uh, category. If we take an example of the beauty category, so we are really surprised how much beauty one can sell in a mall, no, in, in any place. So we have uh, all the brands, for example, starting with Color Bar, Mac, Clinique, Castle Lauder, Chanel, Bobby Brown. L'Occitane, Body Shop, so I mean, and then Sephora, which already has 20 brands inside it. All of them are doing extremely well. So, as a mall, we decided that we will uh, have a personality of the mall in the sense that we should have, whenever we are deciding about a brand, we should keep those parameters in mind. That is it servicing those that customer which we are trying to service. For example, so that's why we call ourselves a neighborhood mall, which is uh, primarily fashion and beauty mall. So in this category, if you see, uh, still there are so many, so much of scope. Like there's no one perfumery in the country which is uh, established perfumery in the whole country. So where do you buy your perfumery? So we created a new brand called Perfume Couture, where we could sell the perfume. So location uh, is very important. Having said that, um, I don't want to name, but there are many malls uh, which do not use the location uh, which is available to them. So there's much more to uh, running a mall than only location. It's some people feel that development of mall is one aspect of it and running of the mall is another aspect of it. These are totally two different businesses and these are not related at all. Like for example, a uh, lot of developers have tried doing malls but uh, they couldn't do that well only because they wanted to sell the shops or move out and no, they could not take the headache of running the mall from morning to evening. Whereas uh, we had no option, we had only one mall, so all eggs in one basket, so we had to uh, you know, work a little harder than others. So. That's one part. Second part, uh, retailers have also uh, are also evolving very very quickly because it's basically they are making money and then we are sharing their part of the money from them. So they are evolving very quickly and they are using technology uh, to the best to their advantage. And as a mall operator, I am also reminding myself and my team that you know the fundamentals of e-commerce and brick and mortar are totally totally opposite. If you see, in brick and mortar, we do not want to go to the customer; we want customer to come to us. We do not have any logistics problem because customer comes and takes it from us. We do not have any warehousing issues. On the other hand, e-commerce doesn't want people to come to the outside. They want to come to their home. So they deliver at home. So all the, all the fundamentals of both the businesses are totally different, though the product and the objective is the same. Now, why can't a mall also start delivering home? And why can't we use our technology 
which is available at very affordable price these days to know the customer. The problem if you notice with brick and mortar is that in e-commerce, the, the, uh, the supplier knows exactly what's the name of the consumer, what's his age, what is he buying, how much time he has bought, how he's spending, whether he has a credit card. He knows everything about the e-commerce. Whereas in our mall, we say, okay, 35,000 people came to the mall. Who came? I mean, men, women, goats, sheep, no, nobody knows who came. So the 35,000 people came to the mall. So I feel that coming times, uh, mall developers also will have to be very, very uh, technology savvy. And first time, uh, we'll have a CTO in the mall. No, it's very, very <laughs> difficult for a mall to have a technology officer. And marketing initiatives are matching with the uh, technology. I mean, the marketing manager who does not know under uh, the, uh, the technology is also not uh, useful because most of the initiatives are offline, online together. So I feel that malls will have to be uh, to connect. They, we may not start doing e-commerce, but we have to digitally touch the customer and consumer and you know, be available in the mind space whenever they are trying to buy online. Great, I think great thought there. And particularly, you know, as a CEO, you're telling me that a mall needs a technology officer makes me feel happy about it. That, you know, at least the malls are thinking change just as everybody else is. So it's, it's important that we all do that. So thank you very much for that. Ashita, Chabra Triple Five, you know, I, I mean, if you're getting married or somebody else is getting married, that's the only brand I usually think of, you know, when, uh, so it's, it's a brand which has come to mean a lot to Indians, uh, you know, when they are thinking party or when they are thinking, or not even thinking party, even regular wear. But I think for marriages, you would probably be the only reference point. So how have you seen retail changing? And particularly with, and because you have, uh, franchising is a great part of your system. So how have you seen franchising changing over the last few years? What kind of franchises are coming to retail? And how are you kind of managing your e-retail and e-commerce, e-retail and retail policy together? Um, the retail industry has just seen so much of change in the last decade or so. It's supposed to reach one trillion dollars by 2020. Just entails more and more change. New trends, new customer engagement mechanisms, new sale uh, mechanisms. Um, it depends upon us how efficiently we use our resources and our re uh, mechanisms to make sure that we get the maximum out of sales now. As you know, Ritu mentioned, we're franchising is a very big part of our uh, system of how we actually interact with the customer. We have around 40 plus stores across the country and uh, looking forward to open many, many more. But even for us who've been seven years in the, in the industry, in the franchising industry now, we've had to completely revamp our entire model now. Earlier, we used to be very, very inventory heavy, very, very location focused, extremely um, uh, experience driven as well. However, with the changing economy, with the changing uh, setup which the market is offering you currently, it became very important to focus on the profitability aspect as well. If your franchisee is not making money, you're not going to be sustaining in the long run anyways. If you're not making money, even then you're not going to be sustaining. So the model to be actually tweaked in a way that investments are minimized, costs are minimized, at the same time sales are not hampered became extremely important. We made our product line even more and more efficient, made sure every piece which is kept in the store is actually required to be kept in the store. The extra items which you might think, try let's skip those out, make sure our product line is very, very lean for the franchisee to offer. Um, earlier, for example, we used to actually make sure our franchisee used to invest a minimum of 60 lakhs into the business. Only then do we work with you. Currently, we say, you want 25, 30 lakhs rupees, we'll work with you and we'll tweak the model according to you as per your space availability. So that's some changes we've done in the, in the franchising sector. When I talk about the e-commerce space, you know, let's say three years back, uh, e-commerce used to be barely a 0.2% of our turnover. Currently this year, it will be around 20% of our turnover. So that's a big change to uh, handle, especially when you have a franchisee set up alongside who will be saying, Ki aap discount kaise de rahe ho online pe jake. The fact is, as I mentioned, E-commerce industry is really in the nascent stage right now. It's really changing right now. Uh, customers are being incentivized to go online by saying that discount is hai, sasta hai, uh, the big billion day, the cheapest day available online, come buy online, by specifically only by deep discounting. How does the retailer survive in that? If the customer feels that my shop is a good thing, or online is a good thing, then it will not be able to it will start hampering my store itself. So we made sure our product line for our stores and our online space was a little different. We made sure um, they were not competing internally and not cannibalizing each other's sales. Um, currently, 
इट्स पॉसिबल बट द फैक्ट सिल रिमेन्स कि अगर मैं बोलूँ मेरे को दुकान चलानी है एंड आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू सेल ऑनलाइन आई कैन जस्ट स्किप इट इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल वेदर आई लाइक इट और आई डोंट लाइक इट आई हैव टू सेल ऑनलाइन मैं नहीं बेचूंगी मेरा साथ वाला बेच देगा सिंपल इज दैट सो ऑल ऑफ आस टू पैप्स थिंक कि ऑनलाइन विल गो वे वी नीड टू हैप्स वेक अप एंड लुक एट इट कि इट्स नॉट गोइंग अवे एनी वे वी नीड टू राइट द वे वी नीड टू बी पार्ट ऑफ द वे वैन मेक श्योर सेल्स आर हैपनिंग एज मच एज पॉसिबल थ्रू द ई कॉमर्स सेक्टर इज वेल इन द ई कॉमर्स स्पेस कपल ऑफ थिंग्स विच वी लर्न अर्ली ऑन इज वे बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू मेक अ नीश एंड ऑफर द राइट प्रोडक्ट अराउंड सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द कस्टमर ऑनलाइन करंटली इज अ रिपीट कस्टमर इट्स अ वेरी वेरी लार्ज नंबर सो इफ यू ऑफर अ रॉन्ग प्रोडक्ट वंस ही विल नॉट कम बैक टू यू नेक्स्ट टाइम अराउंड एंड योर बिजनेस इज एनी वी गोन अ गो डाउन सो द राइट क्वालिटी एट द राइट प्राइस कीपिंग इन माइंड द एवरेज सेलिंग प्राइस ऑनलाइन इज ओनली अराउंड अबाउट नाइन हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड रुपीज Uh, for a brand like us, which sells in our stores, nothing less than three, four thousand rupees becomes a challenge at that point of time. So we, it becomes extremely important to actually make the market niche, tweak your product line in a way that you can get the customer to come back to you again and again. Currently, we can even sell five thousand sarees in a day online, which I can't do on my store. However, the average selling price will have to be thousand rupees. Only then can I do it. The customer will have to. be able to identify with the product even in a tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 city and only then will they even buy the product from me so according to me the biggest uh, learning for us currently is understanding what your market niche is what your product niche is focusing on that to make sure that your customer can identify you and needs you and what that's why wants to come back to you sure i think that's a great point i mean you know Uh, somewhere your store needs to go a notch up if you can you know at least go in the premium or luxury segment and your online can probably be me more mass segment could be the way forward as well uh, great point there ashita i'll come to supal supal is from the watches so he he handles luxury watches watches like rolex and many others which are uh, very aspirational brands for us they are luxury brands so you know uh, supal how do you um as a watch retailer try to address your customers needs because you know a watch is not an everyday buy product it's a product which one would typically buy it okay going by today's standards maybe once in a year or maybe once twice in a year so how do you make sure that the customers experience that once or what twice is higher than you know for let's say for lots of other let's for, for a food and grocery segment so what what extra do you do as a retailer which makes a lot of sense Uh, thanks ritu who put up the point in this uh, uh we have seen uh, a drastic change in this uh, industry Fra- starting from the uh, high end segment to the low end segment of a 400 rupees watch so we sell everything so from 400 to a 2 and 1/2 crore rupee watch uh we have 110 87 brands and we cater to the 2 and 1/2 leg pieces uh, in our stock uh we cater from amdabad so we have stores 22 stores in gujarat and uh, we have different segments and all uh this store we have is luxury time and uh, the important thing for us is that that what can we give to a customer i mean because 10 it is only 10 year old luxury industry which has started in india so uh, and if you see people in india are buying since 100 years out of india and they are very comfortable buying from paris and london and new york and all those places we feel that what we can give to make sure those customer he becomes come uh, comes over here seeing the lesser variety and gets more uh, i mean out of it basically we have uh, done uh, uh, completely different innovations in luxury we have a store which is known as luxury time you can always visit to the other store in amdabad we have a store only operates through appointments so a watch store which has a chef inside uh, you can i mean what kind of we have a menu inside the store we have a mercedes to pick up the customer drop to the customer the store has to uh, has to have an appointment then only customer is entered inside we are handling the store from 9 years and uh, we have full of appointments every day important thing is that that we have a concierge service also so one of the customer had come to us and told that uh, okay you, i have got a ticket uh, of a pvr which was not getting uh, on the right time and you have helped me up and all that's why i'm coming back to you because i'm i wanted to be very loyal to you so small small things i mean uh, a retailer has to understand that this small small things like a perfume a, a proper smell in the store uh customer are giving a right welcome 
all those small small things are very very important to make sure the customer retention happens again and again this is the only way we can uh, help the second thing which i wanted to ritu i wanted to also make a uh, thing broad is that uh, there should be an x factor in our in every retail store which drives down customer again and again in a watch store you will be amazed to uh, to understand that but but we have uh, a section which has a brooches i mean a watch and a brooch doesn't have any uh, difference but customer who wants to come inside if he find something else he will come again and again for the same thing so if how we have to make sure that a single customer how he can come in a different way we should be have 25% of product in a retail store which is something different from the usual ones uh, maybe uh, different from the uh, uh, websites which you are finding over there